challenges we, we face, and we've had uh, some uh, discussions already today that they help frame this, centre on how we see the growing importance of OEMs uh, and the specifications they demand, and how this really impacts directly on how we address with and development. I'll illustrate this with some examples from some recent work we've undertaken in Africa. Demands set out for modern engine oils continue to increase. In the main, this is driven by environmental, consumer, and economic drivers. There is no reduction in the challenge faced by the additive lubricant industry as a part of the overall solution. That itself is a good thing. It keeps people like me and you in a job. It's the development and deployment of balanced lubricant solutions addressing all the performance requirements necessary for the specific application. Durability will continue to be the primary need. Keeping the hardware whole and functioning is absolutely mandatory. We see increased challenge in this area with smaller, more power-dense engines. However, in isolation, the industry knows how to answer these questions. Similarly, with uh, protecting the basic lubricant properties, oxidative thermal decomposition, and so on. Again, we see increased challenges with engine running hotter, increased turbocharging. This has, in some part, been addressed by shifts in base stock, which is in group uh, 1 to group 2, group 3 in this way. We then add in uh, the area of emissions compliance. Again, we've heard in previous videos in the importance uh, of this. It's a legislative necessity that's moving at pace towards minimal tailpipe emissions. This is manifesting challenges in application device compatibility and fuel economy. These either directly or indirectly impact how we put lubricants together. So we can add friction modifiers to the lubricant. This has a potential impact on durability, similarly for reducing the uh, viscosity of the lubricant. We can reduce the amount of sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfur in the lubricant. Again, that can have an impact on the cleanliness uh, that a lubricant can impart. Similarly, any single solution that we put to address a challenge can, and no, usually does. Do you want to get that from me? <laughs> Sorry about that. So, as I said, similarly, any solution you bring to bear on any given performance requirement undoubtedly has an impact on other areas. We need to have a solution that addresses all of them. So, as we see these increasingly complex issues, there's a growing move towards targeted lubricant specifications to address the specific needs of the OEMs and the new hardware. The OEMs continue to support and utilize industry standard specifications, as described by uh, uh, a little earlier this afternoon in the, uh, the case of General Motors. Developing the next generation of lubricant standards is far more involved than just defining a few engine tests. For example, again, as uh, described uh, by Jim, GFI, the process starts years in advance of uh, the date of requirement, with the OEM providing technical needs. Um, this is fed into industry bodies and committees and through discussion, evaluation and development. The outcome is a specification that addresses the base performance requirements, in the case of GFI, of Lewis and, excuse me, the North American and the Asian markets. Just to summarise, I think we can all agree that we're operating in a market that's divergent in terms of engine technologies and we're servicing the specificity of lubricant needs. As a result, we've been asked to service an increasing number of engine oil specifications. If we continue to approach these opportunities in a one-off manner, the cost will be prohibitive. We need to take a more holistic view to how we are solving uh, these solutions. Uh, sorry, to solve these challenges. Based on what we can see ahead of us, it seems unlikely that we'll be faced with challenges that are wholly new to us. We'll see the same challenges we've seen before, just put together in a different way, and undoubtedly combined to provide us with increased challenges. My proposal is that the route to success is to drive for far deeper technical understanding of the key phenomenon, and based on this understanding, we should be well placed to apply this knowledge across a range of specialists.